Have you ever wanted to monitor real-time reverb or delay while you're trying to record a vocal track? I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that using any digital audio workstation. That's coming up on Home Music Studio One. All right. Hey, guys. Dave Maxey here. Welcome back to the show. This is the place where you can learn to produce professional quality home music studio recordings and you can do that even on a limited budget. You can also find me online at homemusicstudio1.com. Well, I want to give you just a really quick tip that's really simple and easy to implement today. Perhaps you've had this issue where you're going to record, say, maybe a vocal track. Uh, maybe it's you or another talent, and you begin to kind of create a new track, and then your talent or you, as you begin to sing a track, think to yourself, wow, I'd love to have some reverb or some delay while I'm recording this track just to kind of get a little more inspiration. And you may have found out very quickly that unless you've got an audio interface that has a built-in processor designed to handle those real-time effects, that you're unable to get any kind of vocal effects without having a really kind of a strange delay. I'm going to show you how you can actually record with real-time reverb. You can monitor that reverb or delay. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can do this in any digital audio workstation. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at a project I've got open here in Reaper. All right, so I've just got a basic project here open. No track squat yet here uh, using the Reaper DAW. And uh, just bear in mind that as you follow along here, you can apply this easily to your own recording software just by kind of understanding the concept of what I'm doing here. In fact, let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit and I have a little better picture of what's happening. So the audio you're hearing right now on my microphone is just plugged directly into my Liquid Sapphire 56, okay? And even though the Focusrite Liquid Sapphire 56 has some great monitoring software so that I have the ability actually to build multiple monitor, uh, you know, uh, monitor mixes, if you will, that's a great thing about this audio interface. It does not do real-time effects, okay? It doesn't have a processor designed to allow me to have reverb or delay or anything like that while I'm tracking a vocal. So let me just go ahead and insert a new track right here. And uh, I'm going to arm this track for recording. And this by default, if I right click in this area and we go to uh, input mono, you can see it's set right now to uh, to channel one, which is what this audio, this microphone that I'm talking in uh, is plugged into. I've, I'm actually got a little bit of different configuration happening. I'm actually combining uh, both channel one and channel two. That's why even though it says mono, uh, in, in channel one here, you see that on both sides of the mix. But bottom line is you're hearing uh, exactly what I'm saying in this microphone. You're seeing this track. Now, the strange thing would be uh, if I tried to monitor this track, if I right-clicked and I, I clicked on monitor input, we would get this really nasty uh, ultimate loop happening because what I'm monitoring right now is actually the uh, the pre-DAW signal. Okay, So this is the actual hardware input coming directly into the audio interface. So this is essentially real time with no delay. Now, the problem comes in if I want to actually use my recording software to say, add some type of reverb on there. In order to demonstrate this, let me go ahead and insert a new track here. And I'm gonna arm this exactly like we did the original. So um, we could call this guy right here, we'll just call it box one, all right, for vocal. And this one right here is exactly like this track up here, but I'm just gonna call this uh, effects just for simplicity. Now, kind of case in point in here, if I bring this mix down here, uh, I'm going to right click in this area and select monitor input. Your recording software is going to have this option. Uh, it might just be in a different place. So if I slowly begin to bring the second track up, what we're hearing is the software input of this track. So check one, two, one, two test, test two, test two, test, check one, two. Uh, and so you kind of hear this, uh, you know, echoey delay, kind of a chorusy thing here. And that is because uh, the the monitoring of this signal would be after it passes through the software. And when that happens, we're, we're ha having a natural delay from the time it takes my computer and software to process everything, okay? Even though if you look up in here, uh, I've got basically uh, a round trip under 11 millisecond delay here, pretty close to that. Uh, that is still noticeable. So if I were just going to drop some kind of reverb on here and listen to the dry signal with reverb, compared to my voice, the signal is delayed. No doubt you've experienced this unless you've got an audio interface that supports real-time effects. So uh, the simplest way that I find to actually, you know, kind of get around this problem is really um, 
kind of understanding that part of what happens with reverbs and delays is a natural millisecond or pre-delay is what we would call that. And so there are a couple of facts that we can actually get by with having a delay as long as we're not listening to the dry signal and it's going to come out just fine. Let me show you what I mean. If I just simply go over here, add effects, uh, I'm going to select um, in my reverbs here. In fact, let me go do it this way. There's just a default reverb so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. This uh, reverberate right here. I'm going to open this guy up, and you'll notice right here on the second track, all this is is a copy of my original. I've got my volume all the way down. I'm armed for recording, and I'm also set to monitor inputs. Now, this track up here is not set to monitor input. I'm actually monitoring on the input side of the hardware of my audio interface in real time. This right here, monitor input, would be after it goes into the software. So I'm going to go over to this reverb effect right here. And uh, let's, for sake of demonstration, if I pull this guy down, uh, this would be just the dry signal coming through. So we can kind of flip this back up, and this should sound relatively the same. So we kind of, just like this, we tested it a moment ago. So if I pull this down, we can kind of flip this. If I go all the way down with a dry signal, 100% up with a wet signal, and then I'm going to kind of alter my room size here on the reverb. This is just going to give us a little bit more decay on the reverb so you can hear it a little better. Now, if I bring this back up in here, check one, two. Now you are hearing reverb coming from the second channel. Let me go ahead and back this even up a little bit more. Kind of gives us a little more of that delay in there and hall, hall sound of reverb. So now this track right here is my reverb. Well, this track is my dry signal that I'm recording with this. Okay, if I mute this, then uh, we no longer hear the reverb. So technically what's happening is this reverb channel is actually still being delayed just like it was uh, when we monitored the, the dry signal. But because it's a reverb, it's introducing just a few millisecond delay by the software in time, but it's very natural because that's what naturally reverb sounds like. It has a little bit of delay in there, okay? So one more time. Right here, real-time effects. This is still being processed by my computer. You can do this on any vocal track. Uh, on any track, really, you want to hear some type of timed effect in there, okay? So reverbs and delays. In fact, let me show you the same thing here with the delay. If I just go ahead and open this guy back up, we'll pull this down just for demonstration. I'll un, uh, we'll, we'll turn this reverb off. Let me just go ahead and insert a basic delay here from uh, Reaper. Now, we're going to do the same thing that we did here with the reverb. We're going to pull down our dry signal here. Uh, in fact, before I do that, let me just grab a, a, a simple preset here, this basic five-tap uh, five ping-pong delay. It's a stereo delay. We'll just pull the dry signal all the way down, and then now all we are hearing is in this track we're monitoring the delay signal. If we pull this back up, check one, two, test one, two, and we need to unmute here. Check one, two, test two. Oh, 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 okay, you get the point. So <laughs> we, we've got real-time delay uh, being monitored while we're tracking. And the beauty of this is, uh, you know, if you're a vocalist uh, or you've recorded with talent, no doubt you, you've heard, oh, I wish I could just have a little bit of reverb in my mix while I'm recording because it just sounds more natural. It's more of, a, of an inspiring way to track a vocal. Uh, this is a perfect way that you can do that, and it doesn't matter what re uh, recording software, digital audio workstation you're using, this setup will work for you. All right, there you have it, guys. Real simple way uh, to get real-time reverb or delay while you're tracking a vocal using any recording software. So uh, if you've got questions, definitely let me know. You can leave a comment in the bottom of this video. If you're watching this video from YouTube, I want to invite you to go ahead and click like and subscribe to the channel. If you find this information helpful, that lets other people find it. And then lastly, if you've yet to join us in my free affordable home recording tips newsletter, I want to invite you to do that right now. You can simply just click on the link right here. Uh, if you're watching this on mobile, you can go ahead and click the eye icon in the upper right of this video. And uh, once you get to there, you just drop your email in there, click subscribe. And just as a thank you from me to you for joining uh, my affordable home recording tips newsletter, I'm going to send a free ebook out to you called The Five Pillars of Recording Studio Quality Vocals. Uh, and that answers a lot of questions that I get specifically when it comes to tracking lead vocals. Uh, super helpful. So uh, until next time, guys, this is Dave Maxey with homemusicstudio1.com. <laughs>